Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and can I commend the Honourable Member for Banbury on her maiden speech. I think from listening to her description of her constituency, it certainly sounds in many ways a lot like my own, so I will need to see what I can do to, to pay a visit at some point over the years ahead. Madam Deputy Speaker, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to make this my maiden speech uh, in this House. I am certainly looking forward to undertaking the duties that my constituents in Midlothian have entrusted me with and will look to use every possible opportunity to advance the issues that are of most importance to the communities I represent. I would also like to thank the other honourable members around the, the Chamber on all sides of the benches and colleagues for the, the warm welcome that I have received on my uh, arrival here in the House. And in particular, thanks go out to the staff of the House of Commons. Particularly, I have, do have to say my uh, induction buddy, David Nicholas, who certainly got me off to the best possible start uh, in this tenure. Could I also take this opportunity to pay tribute to my predecessor, David Hamilton? Uh, many in this chamber will know uh, David from old. Uh, he was a member in this chamber for 14 years. Uh, I have to say I am probably quite fortunate in that I have known David for a large part of that time and have always found him uh, very easy to get on with. I do not know if this is down to the fact that we have never actually stood against each other uh, or not, but it certainly makes things a lot easier. And I welcome uh, the, the warm comments that he has uh, given me on my successful election. Well, David and I may disagree on many things. I think it is safe to say we are very much agreed on the importance of representing our constituents in this Parliament. I am the first SNP member to be elected to this House from Midlothian here, here. And, and, and the first non-minor for decades. Uh, in many ways, this is reflective of the wider changes that we have seen in Midlothian over this time. Ten years ago, there was not a single elected representative for the SNP in Midlothian. Nine and a half years ago, I was elected to Midlothian Council in what became a, a process of gradual growth in 2007, a group of six onto the Council. In 2011, both members of the Scottish Parliament returned as SNP members. In 2012, taking the lead in Midlothian Council to the point where, at the time of the election, I was the leader of Midlothian Council. It has been quite a journey over these ten years. And today, Midlothian is one of the fastest growing parts of Scotland. The growth of world leading animal science at the bush. Reintroduction of the Borders Railway or the Waverley Line, as we in Midlothian certainly look to call it, and the blossoming multitude of small businesses. This has all helped to make Midlothian a destination of choice for so many. I also understand that there are more people now employed in the site of the old Bilston Glen Colliery today than there ever were at the height of the mining industry. It, it just goes to show how things have moved on. But in saying that, Midlothian is still very much a community with a strong, strong identity, which each of our towns defends vigorously and loudly and often. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm sure you've noticed that I'm wearing the Midlothian tartan uh, tie uh, today. Um, there's a very good reason for this. Uh, in many ways, it shows, helps to paint a picture uh, of Midlothian for, for members around the chamber. The green represents the large rural landscapes and agricultural nature of the county. And while we are only a short drive from the centre of Edinburgh, you certainly know you are in Midlothian, with our sweeping green spaces at the foot of the Moorfoot Lammermuir in Pentland Hills. Pentland Hills, of course, home of Europe's longest dry ski slope, which now also includes tubing runs, and for those brave enough, you can try your hand at a rolling haggis. <laughs> uh, the blue represents the reservoirs in the surrounding hills, while the twin pale blue lines represent the rivers of the north and south Esk. The gold thread represents the grain which made Midlothian the breadbasket of Edinburgh, and today we certainly have a flourishing food and drink industry boasting internationally recognised brands such as McSween Haggis and Stuart Brewing, I do confess that as a personal favourite of mine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> of course, is the black. Who could miss the black? The coal. First mined by the Cistercian monks of New Battle Abbey, who founded that abbey in 1140. Coal formed a key part of the history of Midlothian until the late 1980s, the time when I first moved to Midlothian. Of course, New Battle Abbey is, of course, the, the home of the Declaration of Arbroath. 
um, the, the very place in which it was drafted uh, by the abbot of Arbroath. So uh, it's certainly something that I would look to uh, see to move forward uh, in the years and time ahead. My county has a deep and proud heritage, and I, I certainly would welcome all members of this chamber to, to pay a visit to many of the, the tourist attractions we have, from the National Mine Museum uh, to Roslyn Chapel, made very, very famous by uh, the Da Vinci Code. Now, I am not the first member to be elected this chamber from Midlothian in such a stunning political uh, landslide. Uh, in 1878, Midlothian elected W. E. Gladstone, following his decision not to stand again for Greenwich. He decided to challenge incumbent Lord Dalkeith. In Gladstone's Midlothian campaigns of 1979 and 1879 and 1880 engaged the population in a way that was particularly uncommon at the time. In 1879, Gladstone was reported to have had some 30 substantial speeches, reported to be have heard by almost 87,000 persons. I can't claim to have anything like that at the hustings I participated in uh, in the most recent elections. But I do think that the, the general approach is very similar in the sense that I and I know colleagues were very, very keen to go out and have meetings, discussions and talk to people and not simply have invited audience at closed door meetings, but to engage the, the population. Hear, hear. Gladstone was determined to take his message to the people, and that's certainly something I'm looking to continue to drive forward as I undertake my new role as MP for Midlothian. Gladstone's foresight in this does lead me to wonder what he might have made of today's social media uh, if he was around. Uh, no doubt he'd be a, a top Twitterati with thousands of followers hanging on his every word, and perhaps some of us would be treated to see what he was tweeting for his tea every night. <laughs> As I look to follow in the footsteps of those who have come before me, I, want, I will do this in my own way. I am not here to settle down, but I am here to make a difference to the community who have placed their trust in me. If I ask honourable members to give con consideration to what Gladstone might have thought on the investigative power bills, uh, which pre uh, present in draft form in autumn 2015 to follow substantially in 2016, then in line with the, my honourable friend, the member for Edinburgh South West, I would welcome much of the Anderson report that we have seen. However, I do have some real concerns uh, about some of the content that contained in that report, particularly, uh, as my honourable friend says, the, the, some feeling around, the strong feeling uh, around any potential snoopers charter or uh, thought police um, and the mass spying on the public at large. I think we need to be very, very careful about how we take that forward. My predecessor, uh, David Hamilton, was himself a victim of snooping during the miners' strike, uh, an action which was rightly brought forward in this chamber uh, and called for full inquiries, along with the release of further suppressed papers and public apology uh, to the miners and their communities. This action, these actions, along with blacklisting and many others, are sadly not issues of the past, but they are still issues of the day and issues that we need to make sure that we do everything that we possibly can to tackle. I urge members of the House to bear this in mind when we do consider the f future uh, the findings of the Anderson Review. As my predecessor said in his maiden speech, we meet the new challenges. I hope that we will not forget the values for which many of us came into politics – free education, a free health service and support for the weak in our society. I wholeheartedly agree with Mr Hamilton on these points, and I hope many of this chamber will do, and I look forward to working towards these goals. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.